hello let's get started welcome to furry friday um not mammal monday this time we're doing a bi-weekly so i'm doing mammal mondays and furry fridays just so i can have a bunch of different episodes and an opportunity to have a lot of different orders uploaded by the end of the semester so i hope you guys enjoyed my last video i really enjoyed learning so much about elephants and i had so much fun learning about this one too so i'm really excited Let's get started. So we're covering even toe ungulates, um, which is Ardeo dactylae, dactyla, which I am so bad at pronouncing that. But so there's two different orders within the ungulates, which is the hoofed group. There's either they can have even toes, which is like two or four, or they can have odd toes, one, three, five. Um, the Artiodactyla is the fifth largest order of mammals with 10 families. 80 genre and almost like 400 species which is a ton and they're also very diverse which is crazy because they take up so much of the globe i'll have a picture of that in a couple different slides um but there's three main suborders that we classify them into there's suiforms which is a lot of pigs there's suids tassasuids and hippos there's tylopoda which is really just camels and then there's chagulida which is like giraffes really everything else is giraffes and deer and antelopes and water buffalo and all those things um so a little bit of taxonomic history they appeared pretty abruptly according to the fossil record in the eocene i might be pronouncing that incorrectly um around the same time it's hard to tell the difference between the odd toad and the even toad ungulates just because the fossil record is a little unclear um the earliest known was about rabbit size which is crazy to compare to like water buffalo and what we have now in giraffes and everything but it was called the do Codexus, and there's a picture of it on the bottom. That's what they think it looked like according to fossil record. It appeared about 55 million years ago, which is crazy. And the main reason that they think that it's an early Artodexilis is because they have a double pulley astralagus, which, if you look at that top picture, that's a great example of it. Um, pretty much makes an M shape and it makes for versatility of running. So these animals have a locomotive like ability to run and this part of the bone that m shape with the two little boop, um makes a big difference in that so that is what made them think this is really early on in the taxonomic history and 55 million years ago there was not a lot of diversity according to their record but once in the oligocene period there was a big radiation for even toad ungulates so talking about habitat and distribution, like I was talking about, everything in green is where they are and that. I mean, that's like almost um, all over the globe. So they're pretty much in every single continent, except for Australia and Antarctica. Super diverse, obviously. This is a lot of different, like super broad range of temperatures and like temperate and colder environments. So there's a lot of different ways that they've adapted to their particular niches. Um, they basically can survive anywhere that forage is sufficient. I'll talk more about why vegetation is such a big deal for them, but that is like their main component. And they have four big types of habitat and it's all linked to the morphology. So the first is open grasslands. This is where there's abundant forage and they can easily see predators. The second is grasslands with a nearby like meadow and then a steep cliff nearby. Um, which is important because they can forage, but also have safety in these rocky ledges that near the foraging areas. Um, the third is forest and shrublands, which obviously there's super abundant foraging there. And it offers cover from potential predators because the vegetation is so dense. Um, the fourth is, oh my goodness, is called ecotone, which is the area between forests and like super open areas. Um, so this provides for abundant foraging, but also dense vegetation that can shelter them from predators. So a lot of it has to do with predator protection and where they can eat best and how close they can be to both and how they can have the best of both worlds. So morphology, I have a lot of information here. Um, cursorial locomotion is a really big thing about these even toe ungulates. Basically, they migrate, so it's a big deal, but also escaping predators, that's another big deal. So two big components and why it's important. Um, because of their diet, and they also have a bulky abdominal viscera that limits their trunk flexibility, um, 
basically their stride length is obtained by longer limbs and the stride rate is increased because the mass so like the weight of the distal limb and flexing distal joints um it, it's increased by the reduction of the weight but also by flexing like the concave and convex flexing of these joints while they're moving forward um, which i circled you can see right above my head right there um of course it's blocking a little bit but you can see the ungular grade also they bear all the weight there but you can see that it's a lot longer than these other locomotive ways um which adds a lot of flex when they're moving and um if you can see quadruped so there's a bunch of different cursorial animals um but quadrupeds which are four-legged animals you can see if you want to pause and read through all these different things there's a lot of things that are particular to these four-legged animals when it comes to cursorial locomotion it's really interesting a little anatomy lesson so pause if you want to read that um next up we're going to keep talking about morphology all of them if not all of them sometimes it depends on like the sex but they have some kind of head ornamentation, which I'll talk about, and I'll have a little diagram in the next slide. But this this is a fun picture, just showing all the different kinds of like head ornamentation they can have. And they can be really beautiful, which is crazy. Um, but either, like I said earlier, they may have two or four toes because they're even toed ungulates. Um, and like I also discussed earlier, that bone with the two little like joints is a really big part of the cursorial locomotion. They also have springing ligaments, which I'll have a picture of on another slide. They have hard hooves and they also have pretty small feet. And like I said, lightweight limbs is a big part of what makes them move pretty fast. Um, and in some of the families, the third and fourth metapodials are fused. This is also called the cannon bone. In the picture, let's see, the cannon bone is right there. I wish I could point directly at it, but it's right there. Um, so those are all big parts of what make them move faster, and the springing ligament is a big part of what allows them to have bursting energy. A lot of them rely on microorganisms to help break down plant compounds, which is like cellulose cell walls, which otherwise can't be broken down. Um, so they have a true stomach and at least one chamber where bacterial fermentation occurs, and cervids and bovids have three false stomachs. Hippos, camels, and tragulas have two, and pigs and caries only have one. So a lot of different stomachs compared to us, which is crazy. We only have one, but they have a lot of different departments to build because they eat so much vegetation. They have to be able to efficiently and accurately break everything down. More morphology. So the picture I was talking about is right there. Um, this came from my lecture. You can, if you want to pause and look a little closer at the different kinds of families and their different specific horns and how those grow it's really interesting because some of them are just bone and some of them are covered in like epidermis and some of them are keratinized and it's really interesting to see how they grow differently and how that serves them in their respective environments um they have so many variations on their teeth patterns i couldn't even get started on it lophodont is a big deal they have their fourth molar typically has six different cusps which if you think about our molars our four molars are like right behind our canines, or the, they're like premolars, um, but they have so many different cusps, which helps them with grading down the vegetation that they're eating. They also have laterally positioned eyes, um, were more straight, they're lateral. They also ha often have pretty long eyelashes that serve to protect their eyes. Um, they have rotating ears that are pretty big in relation to their skull size. They also have long and powerful legs Antlers come from the base of the frontals and are entirely bony, but horns, so like I was saying earlier, antlers, horns, pronghorns, everything is variable, um, so you can read more about that there. But um, antlers are deciduous, and they're used during specific breeding seasons, so they serve different purposes, which is really cool. Um, horns and antlers are also used in social, uh, social interaction, so if you think about when you see those videos, of the goats like hitting heads that's a social interaction that they do so horns and antlers are specifically used in these social interactions they can also attract mates and there's a lot of different ways that they use them um their fur the under fur tends to be short and fine here's a really cute deer mouse example you can see that um 
under fur is kind of hard to see, but it's short, fine, and it's really good at trapping heat, which is important for them. Their guard hairs are a little longer than the under furs, a little more stout, um, and also acts as a barrier against wind, rain, and snow, which is important because obviously they're out in the climate all the time. And most young have pretty different coats from adults. Reproductions, cute little giraffe. I love to see that. Um, most of them are like polygamous and there's two different kinds that they can practice. So there's female defense, which is basically they're like, they're picking one, they defend it, they go crazy. Or research, resource defense, which is basically like, this is my territory. The females in my territory are mine. Um, so seeing that is really cool. They're also, a few of them can be seasonally monogamous. So they really do depend again the even toe ungulates are very diverse. Um, their gestation ranges go from four months to 15.5 months. So five months shorter than ours or like six longer than ours. So there's a huge range there of how long they develop in the womb. They're also, all of them are capable of walking within a few, all of the young when they're first born, are capable of walking within a few hours after being born, which is insane compared to human children. The timing of um, paturation, like the ability for males to reproduce, coincides with seasonal plant growth, which is really cool because that they eat so much vegetation that females have to be able to make up for lactation by eating enough vegetation. So everything works together so that the fathers are re ready to be a parent when the gestation period is going to line up with the vegetation being enough for the females to feed properly and be fattened up enough for lactation in the process that comes with um, them being mothers so that's really cool some fun facts is actually that whales also have the double pulley astralagus that i was talking about with the little m shape which shows that they once ran running whales is a weird thought um so residents of sandy snowy habitats which this makes sense like physically but they have splayed toes so that they can distribute their weight um which is kind of just interesting to think about many of them migrate i have a picture of that of a bunch of them migrating across and their pheromones are produced by epithelial glands which are usually located on the sides of their bodies and the even toed spotlight this is my favorite animal ever but especially my favorite even toed ungulate is the moose Alces, Alces. Um, the name moose comes from the word. I'm just going to share a few fun facts because um, covering the entire deer family, which is what they're part of, would be crazy. Um, so speaking specifically about moose, the name comes from the word moosh, which means the stripper and eater of bark, which coincides with what they do. They're the largest in the Cervidae deer family. They can run up to 35 miles per hour, just pretty fast. They have not super awesome eyesight, but really good hearing and sense of smell, which is important for getting to vegetation and food. Um, males grow their antlers from scratch every single year, so they shed it, and then they start again in the spring. So they lose all of that progress, and they start over. Um, moose legs are really long, and they're also, funnily enough, able to rotate sideways. Horses cannot do this, but they can rotate sideways um, so they have a lot more flexibility to like kick out at predators that might be coming at them. So say a wolf is coming to like attack them or attack their young, a mom would be able to side kick it, which is crazy because they have so much like joint rotation compared to other ungulates. Um, they also have really low surface area to volume ratio. So in my last video, I talked about how elephants had a higher surface area to like, especially with all of their wrinkles to be able to release heat. But because of moose are in colder climates, they have a lower surface area to volume ratio so that they can retain their temperatures better. And another fun fact is they're really, really good swimmers, um, which is important. The dense fur is a really big part of why they're able to do this. But um, they will be seen like swimming kilometers between islands, which is strange. Um, here are two really cool pictures. I remember being little and being obsessed with these pictures. Um, because they're huge and they can stand their antlers reach up to like 10 feet i think the biggest has gotten even bigger but on average 10 feet which if you look at you know the the comparison to cars that that horse moose is also ducking down so if you can imagine he moves his head up massive also the the picture on the left like 
that's just crazy. Like, that's so cool. It's like a dinosaur. Um, yes, but here are my sources. Thank you for coming to another episode of Furry Friday slash Mammal Monday. And stay tuned for Monday's episode. It'll be a surprise what we talked about. <laughs>